YouTube and hi, look. Turn the, the computer so we see them. Ah, yeah, 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 that's right. I'm trying to not to. Okay, look, can you see the community? Hello. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming. Yeah, so, so they, they're here for you. It's, it's, it's not a big bunch, but it's a high quality one. And you can see Benny up there in the corner. So, uh, so thank you for voting. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it's, it's my pleasure. I've been, like I told you, I was planning on adjusting votes anyway. So you guys do well deserve you guys are doing great work. Thanks. So look, listen up, man. Um, we, we're uh, very excited to have you here with us. Uh, so thank you for coming online. Please uh, introduce yourself. Tell us what is a DAC and why are they important? Why, what is EOS DAC? What are you guys about? And why should the EOS token holder vote EOS DAC? Go. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much again for having me. I feel honored. This is uh, definitely fun to talk to other EOS community members all over the world. Super exciting stuff. I will, uh, so my name is Luke, Luke Stokes. Uh, I run a proxy, do some other stuff. And I'll do like a presentation. I've got some slides, some stuff that I presented on at the BP Summit, which was uh, going into more details about what a DAC is why they're important in the world, kind of walking through some of the screenshots of the EOS DAC member client and all that. But because this is the BP spotlight, I guess I'm, I'm allowed to shield my, my, uh, my BP for a little bit. So uh, hopefully someone there in the crowd has 50 million EOS tokens to get us back into consensus. That would be fantastic. Um, if not, you know, start building those relationships now, you know, find, find somebody with enough uh, tokens to get us back in the top 21, that would be great. But as an overview, uh, our, our BP... In here, not big whales. No, big whales, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. You guys, somebody's going to build an app, right? Somebody's going to build some service or product that's absolutely incredible and everybody, you know, floods their tokens. Wait. Exactly. Uh, so I, uh, our, our BP is EOS DAC Server. That's the account name. We've been around since the very beginning. We've uh, helped with the token launch in a pretty significant way. Uh, you probably know the name, Michael Yates, also Dallas Johnson, Peace and Miss. We've got a great technical team, and that's something that, uh, as a proxy myself, I look at very seriously and take very seriously. We've been involved in the EOSIO.lost, which is kind of the way to recover your account if you lost your original Ethereum keys, and that's helped a lot of EOS community members uh, reaccess their funds. We've done a number of things. We've uh, kind of pushed the envelope on the permission system within EOS, and we'll kind of get into some of that in the presentation I'm about to do. But all in all, you know, we've, if you ask any of the top proxies, for example, we're supported by many of them. Um, I'm not super good at like selling ourselves because I think it's pretty self-explanatory the value that we've added to the system. And the nice thing about it is you could just ask anybody. <laughs> you know, you could ask any of the proxies, ask any of the other community members who've been involved from the beginning and ask them, hey, what do you think of EOS DAC? Are they a good block producer? And I can confidently say whether they're in the East, the West, anywhere, they'll say, yeah, those guys are great. You know, it's, it's kind of a shame they're not in the top 21 anymore. They should be. So that's a very nice thing to be able to say about our team, uh, about our community. We are currently the only community owned Brock producer. And so what that means is we're not a single entity or corporation where there's you know, a small number of people kind of taking all the profits for themselves. Every decision we make as a block producer is actually made by the community. And that's done through the EOS DAC token, done through the EOS DAC system, the, the DAC itself. So we'll get into that in the presentation. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I want to do as far as shilling our block producer. Uh, I think if you do have any questions for sure, let me know in the end, we're gonna have some time for questions uh, specific to us as a block producer. But uh, definitely, I think the value for all of you, like if I was sitting there in the crowd and I came to this event, I'd probably wanna just spend as much time learning about DAX. You know, you can research EOS DAC later, you don't have to take my word for it, you can you know, do that anytime. But learning about DAX is kinda of cool and having somebody who's been there for the last year helping build and helping working with the team building that stuff is kinda of fun. So that's what we're gonna get into. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here and hopefully this will work out well. I'm gonna share my whole desktop and then I'm gonna to try to share this presentation. So you let me know if this works out once I get it going. Yeah, we, we see it. Excellent, good to hear. All right, so this is a presentation I gave recently. Uh, I've given it a number of different places, but I'll just run through it quickly so we have enough time for uh, questions and comments. And this is kind of an overview of how tokenomics and the DAC technology can really change the future of business, nonprofits, governments, basically even your group there tonight. Any group of people that have a shared goal 
uh, can potentially benefit from DAC technology. So myself, uh, I live here in Puerto Rico. This, this picture is actually not Puerto Rico, this background that I took in Costa Rica. Uh, but I, li I moved here at the end of last year and absolutely loving it. I've got a, I had a business that I sold to focus on cryptocurrency. I've been a Steam Witness, which is another DPoS blockchain, delegated proof of stake. I've been with EOS staff for a while. I run a proxy, which you may know about, Luke EOS proxy. And I essentially just want to help create a world we all want to live in. Uh, the term that I've been self-applying lately is Dactivator, trying to help people set up DAX. And that's part of what this meeting is going to be about today, too, because there's probably going to be somebody in the crowd there that gets this and understands it and goes, oh, my goodness, I don't want to do a startup anymore. I want to build a DAC. I want to build a community. I want to build something that's going to change the world and outlive me. So that's what we're going to talk about. A DAC is basically a decentralized, autonomous and then you can do what you want with the C, company, community, corporation. You may have also heard the term DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. And what we personally mean by these three terms, and there's a lot of different definitions, is that by decentralized, there's no single point of failure. So it's not one thing that breaks and then the whole system doesn't work anymore. By autonomous, we don't mean like, you know, AI drones flying around. We mean trusted, verifiable output given known transparent input. So you can know what's going to happen. You do this, and this is going to happen. You do this, and this is going to happen. And it's completely, uh, there's no person in the middle, no third party that says, well, I don't really like that part of it. We're going to change that and not let that happen. The rules are clear, and everybody understands them. And then by community, you know, again, it's, it's you in this room. It's people that have a shared purpose and a clearly defined goal. So if you've got, uh, you know, a project you're working on, an application, uh, a startup idea, a company, these can all be applied to the DAC model. Because I really think that the network effect of shared ownership is going to be really powerful and effective. And uh, we'll explain a little bit about why that is in the presentation here. So again, I think businesses, nonprofits, governments, these all have a, a benefit potential with DAC technology. So I'm curious, I, I can still see the hands there in the little screen. How many of you have ever had a job you hate? Like you just like a controlling boss, you can't stand, you know, a feeling, a lack of purpose, you know, you're rotting in a cubicle and you're dreading every Monday. I see two hands up now. You know, it's like we've all, we've all experienced that to some level, you know, we're, we're poorly defined compensation for the value that we're bringing. Uh, you know, there's, it's like you have an agreement and then it's just mutable. It just changes after, you know, you do the work or whatever. And, and this, this is very common. And this is actually what causes a lot of corruption and, uh, different news stories you hear about, about organizations that committed fraud and things like that. It's because you know, these properties are inherent in the current system. And today's economies, they're just, they have a fundamentally broken incentive model. And what I mean by that is the owners, the customers, and the employees are pretty much always in conflict. You know, the owners want to maximize profit and they're going to pay the least amount they can to their employees and they're going to provide, you know, the, the cheapest service they can to their customers, whatever they're willing to pay, right? And of course, the employees, they want to just kick their feet up, do the least amount of work and get paid the most amount of money, maximize salary, provide the least amount of output. And of customers, of course, they want everything for free. They want the best service possible, the best product, and they want to pay the cheapest price. So these are constantly in conflict. And these systems, you know, they don't work very well. And, and we're coming to realize that. I mean, they work well enough, but what if we flip this around? And with tokenomics, everyone who's an employee is also an owner and they're also a customer. It's the same group of people. So to break this down as an example, if you've got a token and you're sitting there, you know, as a customer, and you're using that utility token and you're, you're getting this great product or service that you value. And then you notice like, hey, something's kind of broken there. I could, I, I'm a web developer. I'm a marketer. I could, I could promote this better. Or, or maybe I'm, you know, an accountant, whatever, whatever skill I can bring to the table and say, I can, I can fix that. Why don't I, why don't I work on fixing that? And you could submit a worker proposal. And the elected custodians in that particular DAC might say, yeah, that's really valuable. Let's go ahead and pay that person to fix that problem or make that improvement. So then you get paid almost like an employee. And then now that you get paid, you got more tokens, you're excited about that. And all of a sudden the product or service is even better. And more people want to use the product or service. And then as a token holder, it's almost like you're an owner because that value of that token can go up as there's more demand to join that community and own that token and be part of that system. So it's this beautiful cooperation areas that were previously in conflict are now really working together. And this, I think, is the fundamental, most amazing idea of what a DAC can provide. And because it's transparent, everything's visible on chain, you, you, you have these aligned incentives and you can kind of reimagine how you want to do business. 
it's it's this owner investor is also the user and they're finding problems and fixing them just like employees and that's really creates a really incredible model so of course the the question on that is okay that sounds fantastic you know utopia hooray right not exactly so now you have to go okay well who's in control right like so there's no boss if there's no like head dude making all the decisions you know how, how do you make decisions and, and and how do they how do the members agree on those decisions and that's kind of where the, the rubber meets the road when it comes to DAX. So it starts with the members agreeing on their shared purpose. We do this, and the examples I'm gonna use in this slide uh, deck really talk about EOS DAC, but the technology itself is open source and available to anyone who wants to run a DAC. And so I'm gonna give examples of EOS DAC, but really, as you're going through this presentation, now imagine your own product or service or even community or nonprofit that might be able to use this technology because the same thing can apply to that as well. So here in our member client, we have the constitution and everyone that wants to be a member of EOSDAC reads through this constitution, it's about 20 pages, and it kind of defines terms. It makes it really clear, like this is what we're all doing for those who voluntarily want to be members of this community. And from there, we can go through and actually on chain recognize exactly what version of the constitution that particular member signed and agreed to. So in this case, here's version four, and it's like, yeah, you know, we, we know that you actually read and signed it. So there's an agreement there, which is nice. Uh, here I could set up a profile. So in the actual DAC client, I go ahead and I set up my profile. I have links out to my social media. I kind of describe a little bit about my bio. My profile is a little more extended because I've actually put myself out there to be elected as a custodian. And that right here shows the, how to do that. As a candidate, you could say, hey, I'd like to be a decision maker within the DAC. I want the token holders to elect me to make decisions on what the DAC is gonna do, uh, budget decisions and how they're going to spend the money, where they're going to put their focus in accomplishing the goals outlined in the constitution. So in this case, I actually lock up some tokens as well. So I have some skin in the game to say, okay, I'm going to put myself out there as a candidate and I'm going to lock up these tokens. In our case, they're locked up for 90 days. So if anybody um, you know, wants to be in this position, but they're not going to value the long-term uh, the long -term value of the token and the community behind that token, then they're going to lose out, right? So this kind of creates this really nice incentive to make sure that the people that want to do this actually care enough about the community to be involved. Also, they you can tell how much pay you want to request as a custodian candidate what, if you get elected. And we, we currently take the average of all the different candidates and figure that out. So it's like there's actually a weekly pay for this position. So again, you're incentivized to do a good job because you're getting paid. Here's the example of our custodian board in EOS DAC. And you can see here all those bios, if you go ahead and click the little button there, you can see the bio, all the bios are, are there. Here's an example of my bio. You know, this could be viewed right in that interface. So all the different members can come here, they can read about the different custodian candidates and they can go ahead and vote them in. And from that, we get these proposals that are available for the custodians to actually vote on. So you see right here, these are different multi-signature proposals on chain, completely transparent, describing you know, how tokens are gonna move around, how funds are gonna be spent. If you were to click over here on this little four, for example, or, or if you actually were to expand out and look at the details, you could see, okay, here's an example of somebody had their EOS DAC tokens locked in a, uh, an, a, a decentralized exchange. They couldn't get access to them as part of the token swap. So they were able to prove the identity and you know, this is all transparent on chain and we say, hey, we're gonna try to get this person back their lost tokens. And we are able to do this as a multi-sig. And so the custodians come in here, they're able to look at the details and they're able to vote on it. They can also create their own multi-signature transaction. So they can come in here and actually, it's funny, this technology moves so quickly, this screen that I'm showing you now has actually been updated as of like a couple days ago. We've got a, a new version of this, it's even easier to use. But essentially, the point is no one person can make a decision about the funds for the DAC, for example. They create this multi-signature transaction and they have to put it out there for a vote by the rest of the custodians. And what's really exciting about this is that whoever gets voted in as a custodian actually has on-chain permission to run the DAC. The actual low-level permissions of the DAC are controlled by that multi-sig of the people that were elected. And those permissions are updated every seven days based on whoever got the most votes. So it's like much like a, a corporation board, you know, that different actions require different permission thresholds. So if you look here on Blocks.io, this is an example of what happens after an election period in the DAC. So this high permission here shows these 12 elected custodians, but 10 of them are going to be needed to make a decision that 
it requires the high permission. Or in this case, medium permission would be nine custodians, or a low permission would be seven custodians. So we have different things outlined in our constitution that have like a special resolution of the board or things like, like if you want to change the constitution or if you want to change some code, for example, that requires the high permission. And the cool thing about that is these are people that the community trusts. Everyone who has the token and is a member of this community gets to decide who these people are. And if somebody does a bad job, they can actually be fired and they can actually be uh, just voted out within seven days. And you can see here, we also have some really cool permissions. There's a great article that Michael Yates put together called Preventing the Dow. If you search for Michael, uh, Mike in, uh, on Steemit for Preventing the Dow, you can read this article. But on our main account, you can see we've got these really powerful permissions. So you've got DAC Authority Active, which we looked at, and then you've got right here to do a, a financial transfer. This requires medium, so this would be nine of 12 custodians. And if the code itself wants to do the transfer, to reach this threshold of two, it only gets a plus one. The only other way it gets up to that threshold of two is with another plus one of a 60 minute delay. This is a deferred transaction that gets put out on the network and everybody gets to see it. So in the, in the case of the DAO hack, which happened on Ethereum, millions and millions of dollars were lost because the contracts themselves couldn't be modified. And they also had no way to monitor what the code was doing in real time and prevent fraud or to prevent a theft before it could happen. And in this case, we can. We can actually watch those deferred transactions. And if we see something like there's a bug in the code and we see that deferred transaction trying to like drain all the funds of the DAC, for example, we have the opportunity to go in and cancel that deferred transaction really quickly and easily so that money isn't lost. So this right here is a really powerful uh, use of the EOSIO permission system that we've kind of been one of the first groups to actually put out there and use effectively. And it's been really exciting and it's worked really well. And it's one of the reasons why I'm very excited about EOSIO. Not many technologies out there, like Ethereum, for example, can't do this yet. Now they have ways to do it kind of with custom contracts, but of course with the, uh, the gas prices and other stuff, it becomes really prohibitive. Well, that's kind of an overview from an example of businesses. We'll talk a little bit about nonprofits and why this is helpful for them, because they have very special reporting needs. And I think a blockchain is really well positioned for those needs because everything's transparent, everything's immutable. You can't go changing your records that you put online. And these governance decisions, you know, they have to be made by the people with skin in the game. You know, we've all heard the stories of these nonprofits that are extracting a lot of value from their donors and not actually providing, you know, the value to accomplish the goal that they claim that they're accomplishing, right? And they're also, you know, that's where the accountability donors has to come in and they have to, you know, be demonstrating that on an immutable ledger, not something that they can just kind of fudge and change. It's really important. And also having all the donations and expenses fully tracked and transparent it's just really valuable. And that's something that I think is really important because if you're gonna put your money into something and you wanna know that it's going to help somebody on another part of the world, being able to see exactly where that money goes and to know and trust the consensus of where that money goes, I think is really important and really valuable. So then of course, what about governments? And this is where maybe a, a little bit of my political philosophy might seep in, my, my volunteerism roots. Uh, so if, if that's not your, your bag of tea, that's fine. We can definitely talk about it more later. But uh, I'm passionate about the non-aggression principle. And I really think that a blockchain represents global non-violent consensus. It's one of the first times that human species has had a mechanism where around the world, people could come to consensus and they're doing so without any threat of violence, which is generally what you get with a nation state government. So I'm very personally passionate about that. Um, a, a great example would be Liberland. Liberland is a, a basically a a nation state of sorts that's starting to emerge and they are using EOS DAC and EOS technology. So it's, it's neat for me to know that this is really being taken seriously by some incredible groups of people in the world. I mean, even the UN did a great, they get a great presentation with the UN in December. And this is gonna be happening more and more, I think, as these governments starts to realize they are accountable to the people and these technologies are gonna make that even easier to hold them accountable. And so I'm personally very excited about that. I think uh, transparency and governance is really important. Again, the non-aggression principle that all human interactions should be voluntary is an important uh, belief that I, I hold. I think that whenever we have these distortions of threats of violence, it really makes the market not function well. We can't have price discovery. We can't have all these different things that are important. Um, I, I personally think that taxation is theft. I think we could do things more voluntarily. You know, we could all come together as adults and say, hey, we want to spend money on these things. And we could decide how that money is going to be spent. 
I think that'd be a much better way to go. Uh, I, I think voluntary competing service providers instead of monopolies uh, are, are definitely a nice way to go as well. We see a lot more quality whenever we have competition in the marketplace like that. And then of course, preventing crime, like we talked about with those permission systems, preventing it before it happens, instead of just like ref responding to it after the fact. And, and the current model is like, you know, the guys with costumes and guns show up and, and it's kind of like, it's not exactly preventing the violence in the first place, it's just often creating more violence, which is not nice. So in, the, uh, in our particular system, and you can configure this for your own DAC as well, each custodian only serves for seven days. And if the votes change before the next voting period, then they can get voted out. So there's a lot of accountability and it can move very, very quickly, very liquid, kind of like liquid democracy. Even in the voting for worker proposals, for example, you can vote by category, you can delegate your vote to another custodian if they're an expert in that particular field. So we're doing some really cool stuff on the governance side. You know, and all of these decisions are made completely on chain. So they're, they're very transparent. Everyone can see what's going on. So again, why do I personally think this is important? Like I was talking about, I think uh, price discovery and markets, they get distorted when there's sets of violence and we could do away with that with this technology. Uh, regulatory capture, revolving door politics, that's basically where the people who are supposed to be reg regulated actually end up you know, getting hired by the companies they're regulating and all these kind of crazy distortions. Uh, we can hopefully avoid that with this transparency. And then cooperation, collaboration, coordination based on these shared incentives uh, instead of like these positional authorities or these you know, threats of coercion, I think are gonna be really valuable and really important. So of course, it's not all just sunshine and rainbows, puppies and unicorns, you know, this is not utopia. <laughs> and I think that's one of the number one uh, critiques you hear when people start talking about these incredible ideas for freedom and autonomy and liberty. They think, well, that's just crazy. You know, you know that's not ever gonna work. And, and it's not utopia. It's, it's just a step in the right direction. You know, we're gonna create new problems that we have to solve with these technologies. You know, there's gonna be voting collusion. We're seeing a bit of that on EOS already. Uh, we're seeing, you know, voting incentives getting modified because of these uh, reward dis distortions. People are gonna lose their keys. There's gonna be identity theft. There's gonna be, you know, faulty reputation systems. And then of course, all the things we haven't even thought of. Yet. So I, I'm not delusional to think that this is just a one size fits all solution for all the world's problems, but I really am passionately excited about the potential. So that's where I think we can go with this. Um, that's pretty much the end of my presentation. So we got a little more time for questions. You can learn more about EOSDAC at EOSDAC.io, or even right now you can go to members.eosdac.io and you could sign up and participate in this experiment of governance. Even if you just have one EOSDAC token, you could be a member and you can actually vote on custodians and you can uh, figure out what we're doing. So again, thank you so much for the opportunity to present this with you. This is my information. I'm Luke Stokes on Twitter. I'm on Steemit as Luke Stokes. At Facebook, I'm Stoked, And then of course, I'm in uh, Twitter and Discord and on EOS as Luke EOS Proxy. And that is the end of my presentation here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and I'd love to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much, Luke. That was very insightful. Uh, I got one question. So uh, as I told you, uh, when we were at, the, at San Francisco, so I, I want to I want to take on this initiative. I want to I want to implement EOS Israel as a decentralized autonomous community, and I've been talking about it since the inception of EOS Israel. But now, uh, thanks to you guys, we have a tool where we can do it. So please tell us in a few simple steps. Here I got my people right here, and the people who are joining me to do this DAC. And uh, this is something I've wanted to build since the beginning because on a long-term basis, I really do believe that the thing can grow much uh, healthier and much bigger if, if, if you know, I, I get to a point where I can kind of release the, how do you say, um, the, you know, the, the holes on the thing. And just yeah, the control of it. Yeah, the reins, for sure. So yeah, how, it's, how do we go about it? I would love to say like, here's the website, you click, 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 and you're done and here's your DAC. That is the goal. That is what we've been working for for over a year. Our two goals as EOS DAC is to be a community owned block producer and to be a DAC enabler. Um, I, I kind of got in trouble a little bit with my team because I did help one DAC launch on, on the production mainnet and they're gonna have to do a whole table migration. It's gonna be a technical you know, trouble for them. So the technology is not quite there yet. That said, I have about a half a dozen DACs that I've helped launch on the Jungle Test Network. 
And it's, you know, a, a bunch of steps that you have to go through. And what I'll do is I've got like a little GitHub gist of like, okay, here's the repos you need to clone. Here's the modifications and customizations you need to make. It's still a very technical process at this point. There's a, a, an API filler you need. There's an API processor and a, a client API. You need RabbitMQ, MongoDB, you know, these other technical concerns. Our hope is that we're going to abstract all that away as much as possible. And we're going to have a DAC as a service. We could just pay, you know, instead of having to host your own applications and, and provide your own servers and all that kind of stuff, you could pay maybe like, you know, hundred bucks a month or something like that. And we would host it for you. We'd maintain those contracts for you. That's where we're going. Um, hopefully we're within weeks, not months away from having our, at least our technology basics ready so that if you did want to do it all yourself, you could do it on mainnet confidently knowing that these changes are going to be upgraded uh, constantly as our team continues to improve things. Um, but we're just not quite there yet. So the answer is I could help you get set up with an example DAC on the Jungle Test Network right now. It's going to be a few steps and I've done that for about, like I said, about a half a dozen people. But as far as like, you know, really super onboarding, simple click, 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 we're not there yet, but we will be. That is definitely one of our goals. And I definitely encourage you to join our Discord, join our community and kind of keep up to speed on it because it's changing every day. And, and that is our goal that there's going to be a place where you can just, here's my name and my DAC, you know, here's the amount of, you know, tokens I need, you know, here's my constitution, my, my shared agreement between my community, and I can just click some buttons and set up a DAC. That's where we're going for, and we'll get there soon. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna leave time for just one question for the community, because we gotta uh, go to our next speaker. Anybody's got a question for Luke Stokes? Where did you get the headphones? Oh, the are... It's, uh, <laughs> it's a very nice gift from uh, the Block One team. <laughs> Listen, how's Puerto Rico doing with the recovery from the? Um, it's fantastic. Uh, what you see in the news is that everything's all messed up. It's not that way at all. Puerto Rico is amazing. Come visit. Come come to El Yunque, to the rainforest. Come to the beaches. Definitely come visit. And also, Crypto Mondays are amazing. Incredible people from all over the cryptocurrency community come every Monday to Old San Juan, and it's it's fantastic. <laughs> Luke, I want to I want to thank you so much for being here, giving us your time. Okay. Ah, what, ah, a question came up. I'm I'm having a little trouble here, and unfortunately, you might have to repeat it for me. I don't remember the rights from Stimit. You might anyway. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, gonna be placing me somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, are there like okay? I understand that people can get help from the Discord server on setting up the DAC, but uh, in general, let's say that um, is there are there what tutorials are there if someone wants to start by themselves, checking the things, understanding it more in depth? Like what with either text or video? What what is available at the moment? At the moment, I've done a number of videos myself. One was like uh, an hour and a half long doing it manually. Then I created something called the DAC factory, which is a script that you can run and do it manually yourself again. Uh, this is all on the EOS DAC GitHub. And I, I also have this kind of gist file, which is just kind of this step-by-step, -step, like do this, do this, do this, that I personally have been sharing with people that I'm talking to as part of like consulting and stuff I'm doing. But I'd be happy to share that with you all. And, and definitely uh, we're in the process of making this easier. I just have to be careful not to go too fast in front of my team because then I create more work for them. And they're like, oh, we have to change those contracts. And that data now is you know, not what we need in the future. So I'm kind of like going as fast as I can right there with my team. But definitely I'll share some more information and I'm really excited that you guys are interested in this. Thank you so much. Take care everybody, thank you. Thank you so much. See you soon. Thanks. Bye, Luke. Thank you very much.